Oh, you talk big, Max. Let's see you got guts enough to draw on a white man. Believe us. Shoot me Mexican. He's dead. Give me your gun. You ain't seem to got the straight of it. I had to shoot him. Nothing personal, Hat. Let's have the gun. What, for shooting a Mexican? For shooting a man. Without this, you couldn't whip anyone. Santiago, get Quiroga's body out the street. Colors, the autumn sky so overpowering you want to cry yet no one sees it but you and I strange are the ways of love the sunlight touches a grain of sand those who are lonely don't understand they say it's nothing, we say it's grand, strange are the ways of love. The hand of fate was long overdue, yet we were worlds apart. I never dreamed of being with you, now heart to heart this is a young land and young are we we know how tender young love can be but in my rapture it seems to me strange are the ways of love strange are the ways of Assembly, it has to be, Your Honor. San Bart is the only town in this part of California with both the church and the jail. Nice, quiet little place. The man leaning against post over there is one in Fort Omaha. The name's Lee Hearn. You certain of that, Marshal? Never forget a face, Judge. That's Hearn. Why don't you arrest him then? If you expect me to arrest every wanted man we see, you'll have to build me a catch pen as big as California. A lot of them out here. Great many times I don't understand you. When it started, senores, uh, how do you do? Are you the big judge? I'm not exactly gigantic, young man, but I am a judge. Miller is the name. I didn't mean it that way, sir. Well, out here, a uh, sure enough United States judge is something real big. I'm Jim Ellison. They call me the sheriff. I'm the one that sent for you. You're called the sheriff. Are you the sheriff? Well, in a way of speaking, I am. 
You see, Don Roberto couldn't handle the upscuffles around here, so he made me sheriff. You have no authority from the United States territorial government? Oh, no, sir. They never heard of me. Then who is holding the accused? Where is the prisoner? Oh, I've got him, sir. Right inside. Have I completely departed from a world of reason? Who's this Don Roberto? Roberto de la Madrid. He owns just about everything around here. And runs the local politics? He runs just about everything. Might I ask who you are? Ben Stroud, Deputy U.S. Marshal. I see you don't wear a badge or a gun. I never had a badge. I'd probably get killed the first time I put on a gun. Some of the boys are real fast with a pistol. Then how in the name of hope and glory do you keep order? And arrest killers? Well, I have to thump a skull once in a while. It is obviously high time some properly constituted authority took over here, Marshal. I never been one to go over a local peace officer's head, if it wasn't necessary. You figure you need help, Sheriff? No, sir. I can handle things. I guess we'll have to go along with that, Your Honor. I suppose I will have a courtroom. Oh, yes, sir. We're fixing it up right now. Come with me. I'll show you where it is. Those are uh, green hides, sir. They do smell a little. A little? I'm expected to conduct a dignified murder trial here. Where are my chambers? Chambers? Oh, that's what you judges call your office. Yes, my office. Oh. Maybe you can use the Major Domo's office. Momento, Senor Jim. Momento, por favor. Pero esa oficina está muy sucia. Y además. No está en condiciones para que la use el señor juez. Necesitamos una semana para limpiarla. And who is this? Oh, this is Santiago, my deputy. He thinks the office is too dirty, but don't worry, we'll get it cleaned up. This is Judge Isham, Santiago. I'm very, very honored, Su Excelencia. I'm quite certain that you have the most unique law enforcement organization in existence. <laughs> Carlos. Senorita. I wish you to meet my Yankee friends. You are drunk. Go back to the hacienda at once. I do not wish to meet your Yankee friends. You put him on his horse. Put him on his horse, Mario. father appointed you to keep his vaqueros from getting drunk in that filthy cantina. Your father appointed me to keep order in San Bart. His vaqueros are free Americans now. I can't stop their drinking. So that's what Yankee freedom is. Freedom to get drunk. That's part of it, Ellie. Would you like to meet the American judge? He just arrived for the trial. I've had enough Americanos for one day. Who is that young woman? Elena de la Madrid, Don Roberto's daughter. I was under the impression that this is now United States soil. Oh, I thought so too, sir. 
Since when does an American officer of law stand at stirrup, hat in hand like a servant? As a kid back in Connecticut, I was taught to take off my hat whenever I met a woman. Marshal, seat to the impaneling of a jury. I will open court tomorrow morning. Mr. Allison, do you suppose you can find 12 competent and impartial men in this town to serve on the jury? Yes, sir, I think so. Do you think we should include a couple of Mexican people, Your Honor? Of course, if they understand English. You have allocated accommodations to me? Yes, sir. Santiago, show him where he's going to bunk. ¿Lo puedo llevar a la casa de mi hermana? No, no, you know where to take him. Ni modo, vete por acá. My deputy. Is he as honorary as he appears to be? He rides with a lot of authority, but he's not so bad when you get to know him. He just demands proper respect for law and order. You know anything about him paneling a jury? Not much, I guess. You think we can find 12 men that'll satisfy the judge? Well, there's going to be a little celebration in town tonight for Elena Madrid's birthday. So there ought to be some boys in town for that. Well, we'd better get started on a rough list, and uh, you can show me where I'm going to bunk. muchachos Gracias a los muchachos y que toquen algo bailable. Está muy bien, señor. Muchachos, el patrón thanks you. He would like you to play some dance music. Fellas, to be here at 8 in the morning, we'll see you then. Thank you. Well, that gives us 8. We're going to have to hunt up four more. But, Senor Marshal, for why you need four more when 8 and 2 makes 12? We need two extra, just in case. Senor Jim, Santiago, he loves to dance. He won't get away. Nothing doing with Santiago. Let's get out and see who else has come to town. Mr. Stroud, this is Charlie Higgins. Howdy, Marshal. 
Howdy, Charlie. We're a few names short on our jury list. How about putting you down for duty tomorrow? Oh, no. No, sir. Any jury that vote against that man wouldn't live to get out of the courtroom. No, thanks. You were a captain's clerk in the Navy, weren't you, Charlie? That's right, Jim. Then you had something to do with keeping records. Yeah. How about putting you down for a court clerk just to keep track of what goes on? Well, yeah, I can do that. Charlie Higgins. We're holding court in a hide shed. See you in the morning. All right, Marshal. Thanks, Charlie. You bet, Jim. Brother? Sir? I didn't get a chance to wish you a happy birthday today. Jim, this is Don Andres Estudillo and his family from San Diego. Senor? Andres. This is Sheriff Jim Ellison. Jim, are you not going to ask me to dance? Do I have your permission, sir? Well, since it is your birthday, yes. Isn't he very young to be a sheriff? Yes, he is young, but he is doing a man's job. He made San Bartolo a peaceful place until Quiroga was killed. We're very proud of him. I'm sorry I was angry with you today. I wasn't really mad. Well, I'll forgive you this time. But only because it's your birthday. You know, senor, tonight you're missing a very good dance. Everybody's having a wonderful time. They're dancing, they're playing the guitars, they're doing everything, you know. But tomorrow, you're going to have a good jury. But I think they're gonna get too many. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. acquainted with the virtue of personal discipline in your habits and manners. It is a prerequisite in any court of law. I intend to see that this rule is adhered to. Mr. Carnes, it is your privilege to plead your own case if you so wish. And since no territorial prosecutor has been assigned, I hereby appoint Marshal Strahd to act as such. Yes, Your Honor. Well, in that case, I'll call Sheriff James Ellison to the stand. Mr. Stroud, you may use my Bible for the oath. Thank you, sir. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir, I do. Your name and age? James Ellis, and I... How old do I have to be? Mr. Ellison, you're here to answer questions, not to ask them. Yes, sir. I believe you have served in the military establishment of the United States. The United States Marine Corps, sir. Enlisted in New London, Connecticut, 10th January, 1845. Honorably discharged as a corporal at Monterey, California, 10th January, 1848, sir. It's a well-known fact that a man must be 18 to enlist in the United States Marines. This should place you at well over 21. You may enter that in the record, Mr. Clerk. Proceed. On last April 5th, did you see Francisco Quiroga killed? Yes, sir, I did. How did it happen? I had Carnes shot him. 
Did Kiroga have his gun out? No, sir, at no time. But he was drawn on me. He, uh, that's why I shot him, because he's drawn on me. Mr. Connors, you will have every opportunity to present your case. Meanwhile, there will be no more such outbursts. Proceed, Mr. Prosecutor. After the shooting, what did you do? Well, I threw him in jail. There's no bad feelings between you and Carnes, is there? Nothing personal, no, sir. Immediately after the shooting, did Carnes ever give you any reason for his act? Well, when I asked him for his gun, he said, I just had to shoot me a Mexican. Did you ever see Carnes make any hostile moves toward the Mexicans? Any Mexicans? Oh, a lot of times. He was always pushing them around. Do you know of any time that a Mexican tried to attack Carnes? No, sir. How many times did Carnes shoot Kiroga? Three. I stopped him from firing the fourth shot. Then what happened? Well, Kiroga just lay there looking kind of empty, like a dead man will. Hat was moving towards him, slow, thumbing the hammer back for another shot. I stopped him, took his gun and arrested him. That covers the ground as I see it, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Prosecutor. Mr. Ellison is now open to cross-examination, Mr. Carnes. What's that, Judge? You will rise when you address this court. You may ask the... Mr. Ellison any pertinent questions you wish. Well, there ain't nothing I want to ask him. Well, I mean, he didn't lie none. He just didn't tell it all, that's all. Very well. You may step down, Mr. Ellison. Are there any more witnesses you wish to call, Mr. Prosecutor? Do I have to if Carnes don't take the stand? There's no compulsion. Can I if he does? You may. Then I'll just play what I've got. You mean you wish to yield to the defense? Yes, sir. I guess that's what I mean. There are two courses open to you, Mr. Carnes. You may decline to take the stand which will force me to give the case to the jury with only the testimony of the Mr. Ellison. Or you may testify on your own behalf. In such case, you are, of course, subject to cross-examination by the prosecutor. I'll talk, because... Stand up! There's some things here that ain't been said yet. Swear him in, Marshal. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? That's right, Marshal. You may first give your name and age to the clerk, and then your testimony. Well, my name's Hatfield Carnes, and I'm 22 years old, I guess. <clears throat> now, about this Mex... Kuroga? I have warned you about your language. I'm a Yankee, and I would deeply resent being referred to as a Yank in a court of law. There are Mexicans on the jury, and present as spectators. I can only assume that the term Mex is equally distasteful to them. You will not use it again. I say, this Caroga was drinking with us in the cantina. And I told him to shut up a couple times. That he didn't belong with us anyhow. Well, he got a little uppity. So I figured... I got a fight on my hands. So I tell him, uh... Step out into the road. Life's a little better. What we gonna do, Hat? Knuckle and elbow him a little? Uh, <laughs> if there's any more rowdyism, I will hear this case without spectators. Go on, Mr. Carnes. Well, we had it out right there. Kuroga goes for his gun. I beat him the draw. And that's it. 
Now, maybe I didn't need those other two shots. I couldn't take no chances. Is that all, Mr. Combs? Yeah, that's all. It's like I've been saying all along. <clears throat> I had to shoot him. The witness is open to cross-examination, Mr. Prosecutor. When you followed Quiroga out of the cantina, did you say anything to him? Anything that might have pushed him into going for his gun? I don't remember. Did you say anything inside of the cantina that could have insulted Quiroga? Well, now, I told him to shut up a couple times, but, uh, you know, I don't go around insulting people. Even Mexicans? <clears throat> I don't even go around insulting them. But you do push them around a little. Well, maybe me and the boys get to feel a little playful. Is it true that you've killed four men? Five. That's counting Kuroga. Were the four men you killed before Kiroga as fast with a gun as they say you are? Well, they're dead, ain't they? Did you deliberately set them up to reach for the gun so you could shoot them down? They don't make no never mind. I shot them in self-defense. Did you kill Francisco Kiroga? Well, sure I killed him. What do you think I'm doing here? <laughs> That's so. You may step down, Mr. Jones. I'll call Clarence Tolliver to the stand. They swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Be seated. On last April 5th, did you see Francisco Quiroga killed? Yes, sir, I did. How did it happen? Well, Quiroga had backed out of the cantina. Scared. You could see he was scared. Carnes followed him down the steps until he stopped. I thought Quiroga was going to run. You could see he was plenty scared. Oh, you talk big, Max. Let's see you got guts enough to draw on a white man. Obrigas. Blooded murder. I guess that's all, Your Honor. You mean the prosecution rests? Yes, sir. Mr. Tolliver is now open to cross-examination, Mr. Cummings. You may step down, Mr. Tolliver. Mr. Carnes, do you wish to submit further testimony? I've told everything I want to say. Stand up! I've told everything I want to say! Mr. Prosecutor, do you wish to address the jury? Yes, sir. I'd like to bear down on one point. You all heard Sheriff Ellison, and you heard Carnes. But the man who ought to shape your verdict is Clarence Tolliver. He told you what Carnes said to Kiroga. And if there's a man on this jury who wouldn't draw after that kind of talk, he, well, he isn't much of a man. That winds me up, gentlemen. The law stipulates that the defendant has the right of final summation before the jury. Do you care to address them, Mr. Carnes? Nope. 
I shot in self-defense, that's all I gotta say. It is customary to recess between the summations of counsel and the charging of the jury. However, we have seen so many irregularities in this trial that I shall, in expediency's name, add one more. I give you your instructions now. Murder is the unlawful killing of a person with malice aforethought. You must remember that phrase well, malice aforethought. For those words should govern your decision. If Hatfield Carnes, knowing he was more adept with a firearm than Francisco Quiroga, goaded Quiroga into a hostile gesture, thus precipitating Quiroga's death, then Carnes is guilty of murder. Hatfield Carnes has told you that he killed Francisco Quiroga in self-defense. Did he? Were the three bullets he fired into Quiroga's body necessary to save his own life? If you find that they were, then you must set him free to walk again among you. If you find that they were not necessary, then you must find him guilty of murder. I send you now to your deliberations with these words of Deuteronomy. Be strong and of a good courage. Mr. Ellison, you will conduct the jury to the jury room. As far as we're concerned, they got nothing to decide. What are you trying to do? Mr. Ellison, I want those men jailed for contempt. I only have one cell in the jail. That's a pretty important prisoner. Very well. You will see that the jury is guarded at all times. I will brook no interference with the jury. Nobody will leave this room until the jury has retired and the accused has been remanded to jail. Escort the jury to the jury room. Like I've been in that stinking courtroom for a week and it ain't even noon yet. Maybe you'd better get used to being inside a lot, Hat. You know, them jurors ain't gonna convict me. Because they're Americans. Yeah, they're Americans. But a lot of Americans don't like murder. But uh, since when is killing the Mexican murder? Well, we'll find that out when the jury comes in. Now, you see, they convict me. You know, them Mexicans are causing an awful lot of trouble. You ought to break them up, Jim. What are they doing over there, anyway? I don't know. Maybe they're figuring out a way to hang it. Point is, they're American citizens now, and they got a right to stand there and talk until that tree falls on. Well, were you going to let them do it? Hang it? Not if I can help it. But I can't stop them until I start trying to. You ought to be packing a gun. If you hadn't been packing a gun, you wouldn't be where you are. I'll dig you up some grub. Yeah, those potas de caldo, frijoles y tortillas. When it started, Don Roberto. Hello, Elena. Buenos dias, Jim. Not when it started. It is not yet noon. I'll get my Spanish straight someday. Seems like a lot of your riders are in town today. They ask permission to come in to San Bartolo and watch your American justice at work. That is why we are here. It will be very interesting to find out what an American court will do with an American killer. When will the trial begin? 
You missed the first part of it. The jury went out a few minutes ago, and Judge Isham is in his chambers. I suppose he will have to remain there until this matter is decided. I am not familiar with your American ways. I guess that's it. He's probably yelling for his lunch. Yelling, Jim? Is this the proper respect for a judge? Oh, he can yell when he wants to. Then we must not provoke him. I have brought some things for his lunch. Oh, that's great. Now I won't have to dig up a meal for him. Did you cook it, Ellie? I do not cook. For this, we have cocinera. You'd better learn. Step down, Ellie. I'll introduce you and your father to the judge. No, I'm not lunching with them. I will go to visit with my cousin, Beatriz Estudillo. Tell Doña Beatriz to expect us for dinner. Si, sí, papa. Now, Senor Sheriff, you may introduce me to your judge. Manuel. Mis Espuelas. the jury? Talk. Mucho, mucho talk. What are they saying? <laughs> I do not know, Senor Jim. What's the matter with your ears? The door is too thick and they do not talk loud. This way down, Roberto. Senor Jim, Santiago, I'm hungry. You stay right there. Sir, this is Don Roberto de la Madrid, the patron of our district. He wishes to be presented to you. Don Roberto, Judge Isham. Don Roberto, my pleasure, sir. I bid you welcome to San Bartolo. How may I serve you? Your presence here is service enough. I'm grateful. You do me great honor. I'm only sorry I can't offer you any better hospitality. If you will permit me, I have brought my own hospitality. Jim, will you please send in my mozos? Yes, sir. And stop that infernal disturbance out there. Yes, sir so we can talk in peace. Don Roberto, this is my entire magisterial retinue. United States Marshal Stroud. How are you doing, sir? Yeah. Don Roberto wants the mozos inside. Come on, Jens. Hold on, muchachos. Give him the comida, Don Roberto. Stop this racket and take your boys back inside. What's the matter, Sheriff? Don't you like mariachi music? Not out here. You're disturbing the jury. Back inside, Mateo. Stay where you are, Mateo. You've been paid to do what I want. Now, if you want to boss some mariachis around, why don't you go out and hire your own? I hired these. Do as I say, Mateo. Take your boys back inside. This is the second time today you've crowded us, Sheriff. Kid never will forgive us. Your marshal is a wise man, Senor Juez. Oh, that's the right rule.
figured you'd use that. You figure a lot of things wrong, Lee. <laughs> I thought you knew how to fight. <laughs> the way you argue. Good logic. The judge wants to see you. Trouble? King's Army. I'll look in on Carnes for you. Thanks. Oh, and tell him I'll feed him directly. Take care of it myself. Any word yet? No, senor Jim. Nothing. Madre de Dios! What happened to the front of your head? Had a thump of skull. This is magic. Sheer magic. It is a small gesture. Please do not think that we are all barbarians because we live on the frontier. It's quite the most handsome gesture ever made on my behalf. Oh, Ellison? Yes, sir. I watched your disgraceful behavior with that ruffian in the street. Well, I was stopping that infernal disturbance for you, sir. And who guards your prisoner while you engage in street brawls? That won't go anywhere. I will no longer be a party to this travesty of proper procedure. I want the prisoner guarded at all times. Uh, I can't do that, sir. Why can't you? No more deputies. Then get another one. Do I have the authority to appoint one? You do when I order you to. Appoint a deputy to guard the prisoner. Yes, sir. Why are you saluting me? I'm not a Marine officer. No, sir, but you sound like one. to the Rancho Santa Domingo Vaqueros. Yeah, and there are riders from two or three other ranches here, too. They're not all Don Roberto's men. Well, I wish they were. Don Roberto can handle his men. Can he? There's an awful lot of murder talk about Caroga. Well, I wish that jury would make up its mind. Oh, any words, Sheriff? Nothing yet, Charlie. That means they ain't just gonna laugh it off. No matter what the jury decides, we're in trouble. If they convict Hap, the no-goods next door will try to take him away. You saw how they were in court. I was almost afraid to testify. And if they turn him loose, those vaqueros will try to hang him. You ain't got no authority to make me stop sending lick at you. I'm only asking it for the rest of the day. I just want to prevent trouble. After all, I am the sheriff here. Oh, are you now? And uh, who says so? You haven't got any more authority than I have. You'd like to run things here in San Bart now that us Americans have come. Be the big saloon keeper, boss, like back home. I'm not saying it. You are. And I'll say another thing. You'd set fire to your mother if you could get a good price for the ashes. I might get best shade for that. Go ahead, Patty. I'd like to see that. My mother. <laughs> oh. Lee. I need a deputy to guard Hatton until the trial's over. I'm appointing you. What? You don't know what you're talking about. Me and Hat's been bunking together for six months. We're friends. All you gotta do is stick with him until the trial's over. How about it? Why, no, I'm no lawman. Besides, like Patty says, you got no authority. My authority comes from the United States judge. Is that good enough for you? Well, I don't know what Hat would say. He might not like it. He running you, Lee? Guess you got yourself a deputy. Fill him up, Patty. 
This could be just what we need. Hey, listen, you got any more of that coffee out there? That's pretty good coffee, you know it? You don't talk too much, do you? Sometimes. Listen, just between you and me now. Do you think that jury's gonna convict me? Hope so. Hey, you want to bet a dollar, eh? Can't afford it. Oh, now, you gotta be a pretty honest marshal not to be able to afford a dollar bet. Marsha Stroud, this is Lee Hearn. Howdy, Lee. Hi, Ben. Fellas know each other? Yeah. You been in Fort Omaha lately? <laughs> I reckon you know about that. I know. You, uh, figure to do anything about it? Not right now. I appointed Lee my deputy. He could make a good one. Have you told Judge Isham? Not yet. Maybe you better just let it ride and hope he don't remember faces like I do. I better be getting back, see what's going on over there. I brought some lunch. It's there on your desk. Looks like you got a caller. I thought you were going to your cousins. No, they've gone to Santa Barbara and TV trial is over. They're afraid there may be trouble because Quiroga was their cousin. Then you should have gone home. This is no place for you. And why not? I'm an American woman now and I go where I please. I want to see this trial. Here, help me down. But I don't want you here. Oh, so you do not want me. Yesterday was Elena, I love you. Elena, I cannot be happy without you. And now, you do not want me. Be reasonable. This is no place for you today. Why can't you take me to the trial? Your father would be furious. There is no woman in there. My father gets over his furies very quickly. I see your American friends are celebrating. They're not my friends, Ellie. They may start trouble. And that's why I didn't want you here. Are you not the sheriff here? Then you must protect me. I can't protect you, Ellie. I've got too many things to do. Very well. If you will not take me to the courtroom with you, then I will wait for you in the cantina. Now you're being foolish. Oh, now look, Ellie, I'm awfully busy and I've got to get back to the jail. So stay here like a good girl till I get back. All right, but don't tell my father I'm here. I won't if you stay right there. Jean. Yes? I think you are a very good sheriff. Thanks. Jean. What is it? I like you very much. Gracias. It's mutual. More? I don't know if I can, but I'll try. I believe this trial may prove to be the most important of your career. Really? Yes, because to the people of California, American justice is on trial. The Treaty of Guadalupe made us American citizens, entitled to all of the rights that are part of that citizenship. Of course. We want to believe in this promise of equality, but we wonder... Go on. Well, if a Mexican killed an American, he would be quickly dealt with. Will an American jury be as stern with an American killer? Frankly, I don't know. 
American juries are fair, but not subject to external influence. These American friends of Carnes, are they not uh, external influences? Unquestionably, as are your armed vaqueros. Once I was law here, and my wishes would be respected. Now I am only an employer. In the name of all good Americans, I apologize for those scum of the cantina. Do not apologize, senor. Such ruffians are needed for a young land like this. You Americans only follow the pattern that history has set. You're a wiser man than many I know who sit in high places. Not wise, senor. I know that the men who waded ashore with our own Cortes were no better than these. King Court, reach it. Boy, you eat a lot of that stuff. Eat a lot of that stuff, Sheriff. You grow up to be a big, strong man. You know, acting like a man before you get to be one can uh, sure get a kid in trouble. What kind of proof are you looking for, Hat? Oh, don't make no difference. I'm getting out of here as soon as Lee and the boys get ready. Ain't that right, Lee? You never do know when to keep your mouth shut, do you, Hat? You see old Lee here? He plays real quiet. He's a man. I won't make a man out of you as soon as I get out of here. A dead man. I'm going to put three of those pretty buttons on your shirt right plumb clean through you, boy, as soon as I get hold of a gun. respects to the jury. Let them know we're still waiting. You better come inside the store. Miguel! Better tell the Vaqueros that the boys are just a little drunk and there won't be any trouble. Don't leave in here, Jim. Andres, Jano, take your places outside of town. Vamos. exercise while waiting for the jury. Don't be a star, Lena. 
Are you all right? Yes, but I do not like those men. They try to act tough when the gun weight is on their side. Gun weight? What is it, gun weight? Firepower, we call it in the Marines. Mario, untie our horse. You're going home. You sound just like my father. If I was your father, I'd spank you. All right, up. I will not go home. Elena, this town is ready to bust out at the seams. You can't stay here. I do not care. I refuse to leave. All right, you're coming with me. Are we going to the trial? Nope, to the jail. You would not dare. Make up your mind. Go home or come with me. I like being with you. You're a little fox. I do not care if you think I'm like a fox. Foxes are pretty. I can't figure why you didn't call them boys in. Let them tear this place up a little. Because I like the things I do to make sense. If you think I'm... Sit down over here. Well, well, now. Well, if it ain't Ladies' Day in the workhouse. Oh, she's a pretty one, ain't she, Lee? Couldn't leave her out in the street alone and she wouldn't go home. You know, I knew this uh, crow squall up on the plat. She acted the very same way. She wouldn't do anything I told her no matter how hard I beat her. <laughs> Is that the one that knifed you while you was asleep? Oh, yeah. No, that was, uh, that was a Cheyenne up on the Yellowstone. All right, that's enough. <laughs> kind of stuff isn't for a lady to hear. Oh, anything you say, Sheriff. Hey, listen, now, don't you be scared, Senorita. There ain't a safer place in the world in jail. You know, there ain't a thing in the world worse than woman trouble. Yeah. I wonder uh, what the sheriff will do with this girl. I don't know, but I'll tell you what I'd do with her if she's mine. Hey, Lee, I've been thinking, you know, you ain't getting too serious about this, uh, this deputy thing, are you? I don't get serious about anything. Maybe you don't get serious enough. Now, you could, uh, you could shoot the lock right off this, uh, jail. Sure, I could. I fire one shot and every vaquero in town stampedes in here and fires one shot at us. And us with a wooden gun. Well, there's another gun right up there on the wall. It's the uh, sheriff's carving. Against the vaqueros, Ben Stroud, De La Madrid and his pistoleros. Hm. It's a stacked deck hat. Maybe so. I just don't like the idea that jury taking so long. Well, when are we going to make our move? When I say so, I'll have to go along with that. You know, Lee, you ain't uh, thinking I'm running out on me, are you? How would you handle it if I did? I guess I'd just have to kill me another man. That's the way I figured it. Sure move. Will you please go home? You see, I can't take you to the jail. I don't know what to do with you. Looking for me, Marshal? Nothing to worry you, Sheriff. The judge thinks the cantina gang's getting out of hand. He wants to know just what goes on there with them fellas. Well, I'll check it for him. Better let me do it, son. He gets a little fussy about the orders. Besides, I think he wants to see you about something else. Better hike on over and see what it is. Yes, sir.
Yours? I'll take whiskey. I don't drink after poor box thieves. You may call yourself Sullivan now. But your name was Kelly when you robbed a church in Benton, Missouri four years ago. That's not enough to arrest you for. But it could get you killed if you bother me. I'll take a clean glass now. Yes, sir. You've been a judge, I believe. An alcalde, yes. But not a great magistrate like yourself. When the jury returns its verdict, would you do me the honor of sitting on the bench with me? It is I who would be honored. My motive is entirely selfish. I want the Mexican people to feel they've been represented in the proceedings. My people will appreciate this gesture, I am sure. Tienen hambre. Yo también, ni modo, señor. Ahora se esperan hasta que venga el señor Jim. ¿Qué cosa? Se espera, señor. O ven lo que hacen. No faltaba más. ¿Qué fue eso, Alba? Dejo hambre, patrón. Quieren comer. Tienen hambre, señor. Oh, ¿dónde you get this? No, señor. Ese es para mí. Preste para acá. Si apenas me lo dieron a mí, lo agarré allí. Mr. Ellison. Yes, sir. Would you kindly make inquiry of the jury foreman? As to what progress is being made toward a verdict? Well, I just found out, sir. The whole jury is getting hungry, so I guess they'll be finishing up real soon. Are they deciding a man's fate on the cravings of their stomachs or on the evidence? Well, I wouldn't know, sir. You'd better ask him. That will be all, Mr. Ellison. Yes, sir. If American justice is fair, then you have done a great thing here. But if word goes forth that American justice is only for those who were born American, then, well, quién sabe? So you better get him out of town, to your ranch, any place, but get him out of San Bart. But why do you say this? Because there's going to be trouble. He gave me a break, now I'm giving him one. If he's your man, get him out of here. Oh, I was uh, just apologizing to the senorita for letting the talk get a little rough over in the jail. It's all right, Lee. Forget it. You'd better get back to Hatton and stick with him. Sure. Oye, oye, Ramiro, ven para acá. Córrale. Oye, corre usted a la cárcel y le dice al señor Chirife, al señor Jim, que el jurado ya está listo, pero córrale, ándale, pronto. Córrale. to go. Jim, please don't go. Why? That man Hearn, he told me there will be trouble. Something might happen to you. Allie, nothing's going to happen to me. Now, your father appointed me to do a job, and I'm going to do it. Then I will go to my father about this. But your father has nothing to do with it. Now, listen. You stay here and wait until we take Hat over into the courtroom. And then you go to the jail and wait there until I come to get you. All right, but please be careful. Like things just 
starting to happen. Now, when we get in there, stick together. Remember that. Stick together. Do we take half right in the courtroom? How do I know? We just got to play it one card at a time till we find out what they're going to do with him. What about them vaqueros? Like I told you. Play it one card at a time. The vaqueros want to deal themselves in? And we'll take care of the vaqueros. Severiano, you wait here. Don't enter town unless you hear the bell again. You'll have to wait until the prisoner's inside, boys. Hello, boys. How you doing? Pretty good. Good luck, Hat. <laughs> Things look, Marshal. The jury's ready whenever the judge is. You think they're gonna hang me, don't you? I hope so. We'll find out pretty soon. That's far enough, Sully. Back up, men. And settle down. Better notify the judge the prisoner's in court. Please see that the chair is placed to the bench for Don Roberto. I'd like to know where Lee Hearn stands. Don't worry about Lee. He's had some power, ain't he? Shot that Max, you know. I shot him in the way. <laughs> Marshal Stroud, to the bench, please. Isn't that the wanted man, Hearn, you pointed out to me? Yes, sir. Why is he allowed so close to the prisoner? Ellison appointed him deputy, Your Honor. Mr. Ellison? He is your deputy? Yes, sir. This is a piece of stupidity I cannot condone. The man is a fugitive. Did you know that when you appointed him? No, sir. Then relieve him at once. I'd say the boy. The sheriff's made a good pick. I've known quite a few lawmen who started out with bad records. They've made good peace officers. They'll fight. So will Hearn. I'm not interested in your sociological opinions, Mr. Strud. However, in the circumstances, I will not insist upon his instant dismissal. Let's go inside. But if trouble ensues due to his presence here, I shall hold you strictly accountable.
Get back where you belong. If you will permit me. Miguel, deténgalos. Acomodé el lugar. Sí, don Roberto. Deténganse ahí. Guarden silencio. Everything will stay settled down, Your Honor. We are about to receive a verdict from the jury. If there is any demonstration, this courtroom will be cleared. And those responsible will be cited for contempt. Bring in the jury. The jury will please rise. The accused will rise. Gentlemen of the jury, look upon the accused. Mr. Carnes, look upon the jury. Mr. Foreman, have you reached a verdict? Yes, sir. We have. Is it a unanimous verdict? Yes, sir. What is your verdict, Mr. Foreman? Guilty. I guess this is our place. Don't start that, Sully. You wouldn't stand a chance. You don't think we're going to let you hang him? Who said anything about hanging? Sentence ain't even been passed yet. Disarm those men. Their arms will be given back when this court is adjourned. Miguel, desármelos. Sí, don Roberto. Ellison, you will take charge of the prisoner before I pronounce sentence. Mr. Carnes, have you anything to say before sentence is passed upon you? I'm going to say what I've been saying all the time. And that's that I had to shoot him. Because he's drawn on me. The jury does not show your opinion. They have found you guilty of murder. This court hereby sentences you to serve 25 years in a federal prison. Because the crime was committed during a period of transition to constitutional law, I hereby suspend your sentence on one condition. So long as you live, you may neither own, nor wear, nor touch a firearm. While you observe this condition, you are a free man. Violated. And you will be hunted down with all the might of the United States government. Mr. Carnes, you're free to go. Mr. Ellison, to the bench, please. Marshal Strahd. What are you going to do now, little killer? I'm going to do just about everything I always did, except own a gun. You know, you ain't going to live very long without one. <laughs> Sheriff? I promised 
most I make a man out of you, you know. Well, I'm aiming to keep my promise. So why don't you just borrow the marshal's gun and step outside there? And anybody else here wants to deal himself in on this is welcome. Now I want to hear the door open. I'll be waiting for you. Oh. I'll drop the first man that goes through that door. Back up. Hold it, Marshal. You said you wouldn't go over a local peace officer's head. And this is my prisoner. Picked yourself a job. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No thanks, Marshal. I'm no good with a pistol. Got to get my rifle from the jail. No one will leave this room. gonna fool me? Sheriff? You gonna wear out them pretty soldier pants crawling around on like that? Now listen, I don't want to shoot you like uh, a crawling lizard or something. I want you to get up. Why don't you stand up like a man? I want you standing up looking at me when I shoot you. I said, get up! First man that moves through that door gets shot. After I get rid of your boyfriend, I'm coming in after you. They're in the courtroom. We're on our own now. Jim, please do not do this. Maybe the next time I tell you to go home, you'll go. You better come out of there, Sheriff. I'm not going to wait out here forever for you. 
If you go out there, he will kill you. Would you rather I let him come in here? No, but we can barricade the door and wait until someone can come to help us. Sure, and I'd be ashamed to look in a mirror the rest of my life. Your foolish pride. You will get yourself killed just to prove you are not afraid. Jim, please don't go. That's the first time I've ever kissed you. Now go get in the cell and stay down low so you won't get hurt. Well, go on! When I come over, I'll be bringing my gun with me. When I make a promise, I keep it. I just don't know how to get over there yet. Senor Jim. Just a scratch. Sir, I've just killed Hat Kimes. Earlier today, you told me you thought American justice was on trial here in San Patolo. I feel it's been completely vindicated. I now return to Washington knowing the authority of my court has been upheld. You're to be commended, Sheriff. No, no, senorita. Lo, lo lastima. In the meantime, you better take that shoulder over and get it cleaned up, son. This is a young land, and young are we. We know how tender young love can be. But in my rapture, it seems to me strange are the ways. 